Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Darren Pyfinch. I'm a personal trainer and health coach. Um, so today I'm going to do basically a talk about how to stay healthy in the current climate. Uh, the idea is I'm going to do a few slides, show a bit of information, and then if anyone wants to just chip in whenever you like, it's not formal. Uh, as Mike knows, I quite like being um, people taking the mickey, so I'm, I'm not too precious, don't worry. So, uh, okay, right. So let me go to the first slide. So from a business perspective, um, what do you think the main reasons a business does not hit its potential? Is it COVID-19? Is it government tax policy? Is it sales training? Is it marketing? Would you say? What would you reckon? Marketing, go and I'll start. Marketing, okay. So I would argue that's all bullshit, BS. Yeah, that, wasn't, uh, that wasn't given as an, um, an, as an option. That BS wasn't. <laughs> just, I, I would have said point. mindset of it that had been there. <laughs> so I would argue it's energy and focus that is the reason why most businesses are successful or not. Um, and I'm going to talk more about that now. So small business growth needs to be measured. And so there's various experts on this call. So I know Mike deals with selling businesses i know paul has got his own business community john is an export guy and i, I don't know you bob what, what do you do i'm an osteopath mate you're an osteopath okay so essentially you're all experts in the room and you do what you do okay what i would say is that with a business um there's certain characteristics that make it a good business okay so one is it's profitable two is you've got something like three to six months of cash in the bank business and personal all right you've got repeat orders from loyal clients you've got consistent marketing to an interesting audience you can uh, decide early if you're a lifestyle or a growth business you can systemize so you're not too reliant on the owners and you can automate as much possible of the admin all right I'm not claiming I'm the you know most successful businessman on the planet, but what I am learning through a lot of you guys going to these um, business meetings is essentially these are the rules, okay? Now, I would argue with the human body, you have a similar set of rules, and I'm going to go through those now. So characteristics of a healthy business owner are, number one, self-awareness of what good health actually means. So a lot of people don't even realize whether they're healthy or not. They believe they are or they believe they're not but they've got no real measure of to say whether that's true or false um and number two i would say that there needs to be a consistent focus on aiding the body rather than wrecking it i've not always been well uh, i used to be heavily overweight i used to have very high blood pressure um i used to have loads of things that weren't working properly um and i don't claim to be in 100 percent tip-top health i'm working on it and there's certain areas that i'm very healthy in certain areas that still need work okay so i'm not sat here saying i'm joe wicks <laughs> so i'm not okay i'm kind of interested in helping people and um, just telling people information on how they can get healthy okay so the, essentially the aim is to optimize the body so that business and your well-being increase all right so i'm going to go into some specifics now so here are some characteristics of a healthy individual okay so i work with the university of venice uh, quite closely and them and a hundred other universities in europe in europe and us essentially de define some rules of what makes you healthy okay so this is what they've come up with so i'm not going to go through every single one but i'm going to talk through a few of them so body fat between 12 to 20 percent for women and 10 to 25 percent for men now you might think that seems quite high but most body fat measures on scales um, only measure two types of fat what they've decided is there is a third type of fat which is essentially fatty deposits in your muscle and so essentially these numbers are combined for three types of fat okay the second one is a waist below 36 inches now Obviously, if you're seven foot two, that might be difficult. But for most average size people, that would be about the max. And obviously, there is a lower limit depending on your height. Muscle mass above 35% for women and 40% for men. 
I'm not going to go through every single one of these because I'll leave you all with the slides. But essentially, there are various rules that they've determined makes you healthy. OK. So the human body is no different to any, any business. There are various levels in the body that can be measured, tested and manipulated. So the days where you just kind of ate what you want, drank what you want, and then the NHS kind of sorts it all out. Um, I would argue are gone um, they were gone long ago and obviously with you know what's just going off now I think it's even more important that people actually have an awareness of their health and what they can do about it but also to empower themselves to think well you know is it just genetically the reason why maybe you know, I'm carrying a bit of weight or I'm breathless or I'm, I'm not sleeping well or whatever and actually there might be quite a few things that you can do to help it okay so the science of measuring, testing and altering your body is called biohacking. So this is the kind of thing I'm into. Um, and like I say, the reason I'm into it is because my health didn't used to be good at all. And being quite an analytical person working as a software tester, I used to spend hours and hours, and hours trying to work out why my energy wasn't right and why I felt tired and my sleep wasn't good and all the rest of it and why I couldn't get my weight down. So I got into this field probably 10, 15 years ago. Okay, so if you don't have enough energy, you won't hit your potential. And if you don't have enough focus, you will spread yourself too thin. So trying to run a business, you could blag it for a bit. And I tried that for quite a while. But if your focus ain't there and your energy ain't there, at some point, you're not going to really hit what you could hit. Okay. So... There's lots of people who make a lot of money while they're overweight and ill. So I'm not claiming that you have to be skinny and super fit to make money because that's clearly not true. However, I would say very few of them get to enjoy this properly without having a life event of such. And that's usually a health event, like what happened to me when I collapsed at work. I woke up and I thought, I don't want to do this again. <laughs> so I meet and help these people every week. So my top tips for everybody on this call is number one is to test your body. Okay. So you might, might, might think, what does that mean? So there's different types of testing. So you've got something called a biotechnica test. Um, essentially what it does is this picture here where you've got the clips is you would lie down um, and put the clips on your hands and feet and it scans your body. So the markers that are in the previous slide about muscle mass, bone mass, fat mass, water, inflammation, things like that, this kit will test it. And so essentially you will have a reading. So it's a bit like taking a car for an MOT. You would take it into a garage, any decent garage now, you take it in there and they give you a readout and they'll say, right, your oil, your oil's low, your oil filter needs changing, your, I don't know, whatever. I'm not, I'm not into cars, but the point is they'll give you a readout and they'll tell you what to do about it. And the new technology that's coming online, online now will do exactly that. It will tell you, right, your, these, these, these are your readings you're you know outside of the reference range on this one or you're inside on this one and it can basically give you an outline of what to do does that all make sense so far or am i rushing that's good is that good okay cool so second one which i really love um is this thing so if you can see that on the my camera there you see that ring mm. it's called an aura ring okay this ring has got uh, electrodes inside it okay so i wear it every day and what it does it measures um four significant markers of my health so number one it tells me how much i've slept and you might think well so what a fitbit can do that but this thing goes into real detail so it can tell me how much light sleep i've had how much deep sleep i've had how, how much dreamlike sleep i've had uh, but unlike the Fitbit, it's actually accurate. It's clinical grade. And so it tells you exactly what's going off. Um, number two, it will tell me how many breaths per minute you're taking. And you might think, well, so what? But what they've found is that um, there are... So you wait for two weeks, it will tell you your baseline. So that, for my baseline, is about 12 breaths a minute, right? If I suddenly start breathing 14 and 15 and I'm not running or I'm not doing anything else, something's going wrong. And interestingly, when you get a cold or a virus or anything like that, this thing will pick it up two days before you even know about it. 
And the third thing it will do is it will measure your body temperature. So normal human body temperature is roughly 37 degrees Celsius. If you suddenly shoot up a degree, you probably wouldn't notice it yourself, but this thing will pick it up. Um, and so like the situation we're in at the moment, some of the major reasons that uh, people are seeing with um, symptoms are fever. And the thing is, this will pick it up, you see. This will tell you your body temperature. The fourth thing um, it would tell you is, so what was it, uh, sleep, respiratory. Just give me a sec, I'll just have a look on my app, because I've just got it here. Uh, Something to do with your memory? Memory, that's the one. <laughs> uh, heart rate variability. Oh yeah, there's two others. So w one of them's heart rate. So again, a cheap 10 quid gadget can do that. The interesting thing about heart rate is, um, let's say you're a train runner. So myself I, I run a lot um and my heart rate is about average 39 to 40 right which is quite low your average person who doesn't do any kind of training you're looking at 60 to 70 if you're quite out of shape you're looking at 80 plus okay now all of us it's regardless what your say, say with mine say suddenly mine shoots up 10 points for no reason and i'm done, not done any exercise well, a few things could have happened. One is I could have had a beer. So if I go on the beer on a Friday night, which I do occasionally, my heart rate will go blah, 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 right? And that's just what alcohol does. If I've not had a beer and it suddenly starts shooting up, again, there might be something going wrong in the body that you, you can't even feel, but it, this ring will tell you. So it's like an early warning system. But the best thing it does, right? And this is the reason why this is 250 quid, this ring is. Um, they're coming down because it's getting, it's becoming less niche and it's becoming <coughs> more mainstream. What it will tell you is something called heart rate variability. So everybody, your heart rate variability is, when you've got a heart rate, so let's say uh, my heart rate's say 40, right? And it'll go beep, 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 like that. The distance between the peaks when it goes beep is measured in milliseconds. Well, interestingly, what they've found is the more it varies between that peak, that peak, that peak, etc., the healthier you are. And so for my age group, I'm 45. Um, I'm a trained runner, kind of, you know, personal trainer. My average heart rate variability is between 100 and 110, right? If you're 65, 70, your average might be 35 to 40, maybe even 25. But the point is you'll have a baseline number, all right? If all of a sudden it suddenly drops through the floor you've either done one of two things. You've either done a very, very heavy exercise. You might have stayed out late. You might have had a really bad sleep. You might have eaten something that doesn't agree with you, or you might be coming down with something. And what they found is that this thing will actually pick up that. And interestingly, I'm on a study at the moment. So I'm on a study with um, about COVID-19. So I submit my data virtually every day I submit anything, if I have any symptoms and they're testing 25,000 people across the world for symptoms. And so they're correlating the data on this of the four markers I was talking about. If I tell them anything's going wrong and also um, they're also sending me an antibody test out. So all of these 25,000 people, we get an antibody tests so they can actually see what's going off. And so whether it's COVID, whether it's flu, whether it's whatever it is, this thing will pick it up and it's really cool. So, also, I would recommend something called a Freestyle Libra. So, with blood sugar, what happens in your body is, let's say you have a Mars bar, right? Your blood sugar will go through the roof, and it'll probably hit seven or eight, depending on how healthy you are. If it suddenly keeps climbing, you've got an issue there, potentially. And so, it, what it means is your body's not handling blood sugar very well. If your blood sugar kind of hangs around, goes up to a seven, then drops down fairly quickly back down to four or five, you, it's working properly by and large, right? This test, you put it on your arm. So you get a disc and you slap it on your arm there and you've got an app on your phone. Literally, it monitors in real time your blood sugar. So you can test certain foods. So for example, for me, if I eat potatoes, my blood sugar goes through the roof. It goes to 10. Uh, and the point being is, is that if your blood sugar stays elevated for a long time, what happens is you get fat, okay? 
And also it starts, if, if, if it's been elevated for a long time, you're talking years, decades, it causes type 2 diabetes. So in a nutshell, this piece of kit that costs 70 quid that you can get off Amazon after this call can test you to see um, whether you have a, an issue with blood sugar. Does that all make sense so far? Have you got any questions at all? All good. Cool. Right, the coolest one out of the lot, in my opinion, is this last one. So this is called a GI map test. So it's a stool test. So what you do, you send a, send a stool to set a sample off to the lab. They look inside your gut and they see, right, have you got any parasites? Have you got any certain pathogens, harmful bacteria, stuff like that? And they give you a report. And at the end of it, they'll say, um, we've found a parasite or we've found a harmful bacteria. And this is the reason why your belly's sticking out or you're feeling lethargic or you've got IBS symptoms or stuff like that. And so I work with doctors who analyze this stuff and then I help people essentially get back into shape doing this but it's all stuff you can buy um and the, the point what i'm trying to make is that rather than you just hoping you're going to be healthy for the rest of your life you can actually actively monitor it a bit like a car and when you start degrading you can you, you can't exactly swap bits out but you can certainly make interventions in terms of food in terms of lifestyle changes okay so Here's some data that I'm going to share with you all. So I've tested about seven, I've tested about 950 people in the Milton Keynes area. 75% of them have either got chronic inflammation, HPX, HPA axis dysfunction, high EMAT, alcohol dependent or blood sugar issues. So basically most people are ill, all right? That's not me trying to scaremonger, that's just the facts. Um, according, to the statistic, according to the criteria that were on the previous slide, that's the truth. Um, and so in order for you to get healthy, you can help by making changes now. So here's some tips. So that, that that's all the stuff out of the way on the problems. This is the, the kind of things you can do to get back into shape. So this is a tip, boost your immune system. So number one, the classic one I'm seeing is most people are drinking too much. Um, I've, I've always liked to drink. I like a beer. Um, I'm not claiming I don't drink, so I do. But the point is, there is a direct correlation with um, drinking and your immune system. And what they're finding at the moment now, especially with the COVID, is that it's dropping people's immune systems through the floor, making them more susceptible. Okay. What I would suggest is switching from certainly from white wines and beers to spirits if you have to drink and also start asking a question, you know, why do you have to drink as many units? I'm not going to get all moral and high, you know, like I say, I drink, I like it. I don't think there's anything wrong with it in moderation. All I'm saying is there is a, a direct link between your immune system and alcohol. Um, you know, and you've got to think in this new world we've got, there's going to be a lot of challenges around GP time. Um, you know, are you, are you having days off work with it? You know, that's the kind of thing you want to think about, really. Um, the third part of this is in terms of boosting your immune system. So let's say you're not ill. Um, you're not got a cold or flu or anything like that. If it's just you're just feeling normal, I would highly, highly, highly recommend having 10 second cold showers after your normal shower and you might think that sounds crackers but what it does it boosts your immune system so that you're more able to fight off problems okay do not do it if you've got a cold though if you're feeling run down or anything like that please don't do it because what it does it will create more um more white blood cells basically so that it goes after any potential problems so if you do it when you're feeling normal it will help you lose weight uh, it'll help you gain more what's called brown fat, which is what you need in your body. Um, and also what I tell people is stop wearing a coat in the summer, you know, in the spring, even you don't need one. It, it, I think it's like, it's almost like we're, we're, we're animals. Yeah. And we claim to be very sophisticated, but actually we're trying, our body needs to be outside. 
it needs sunlight it needs cold as well and by wearing all these layers all of the time it's actually insulating us too much and we actually need to get cold again okay here's one around food so a lot of people overcomplicate this um try and have a simpler diet at least initially so if you get headaches if you get arthritis ibs depression anxiety moodiness etc etc you could go down the route of going to the gp or the hospital and getting the happy pills and all that and i'm not suggesting i'm not a doctor i'm not medically trained so i'm not going to give any opinion whether you should and shouldn't but what i am going to say is that have you eliminated all the potential reasons why they're happening okay so by looking at your food and doing what's called an autoimmune protocol diet which is a fancy way of saying eating whole foods um which includes things like good fats good quality protein green veg um stuff like that avoiding processed foods like lots of bread and lots of ready meals and all that kind of stuff and again i like bread i like ready meals i'm not saying don't ever eat them but the point is if you strip your diet right, right back down see what happens and all of a sudden so i see this all the time with people is when when they quit bread and they quit ready meals their belly just vanishes and they go bread's really that powerful i'm like yeah but most people don't make you fat and also it causes headaches and ibs there's so many other symptoms and so by eliminating lots of these unnecessary foods and then what you do reintroduce them um once you tried it for a month or so and you've lost a bit of weight and your belly's gone flat and etc try reintroducing them and see what happens and if all of a sudden your belly sticks out so i've got one lady i'm coaching she had a two slices of bread she'd not had anything for six weeks her belly literally just came out her face went like a hamster and she just said well that's what it is isn't it and i went yeah and so the point is there are certain trigger foods that you don't even need in your life um so <clears throat> okay um i would definitely recommend i know it's difficult times at the moment but for me there's no reason not to get outside for an hour every day have a walk have a jog find somewhere isolated find somewhere where there's nobody else but you need to get outside and it really is important because we're animals and we need sunlight um it helps boost vitamin d3 which helps boost mitochondrial function that sounds a big fancy word essentially what it means is your body operates better it's got more energy okay here's a really biggie get some sleep so a lot of people have problems with sleeping and so acknowledge well, number one is test it so with something like an aura ring or you, you can use a fitbit but these these are better this will tell you exactly what's going off. Um, so it'll tell you what time you went to sleep. It will tell you how quickly you went to sleep. So some people can't get to sleep for an hour, hour and a half. Mine last night was, I'll tell you right now. Sleep. I went to sleep after 11 minutes. Okay. I had one hour, 52 minutes of deep sleep, which is the, I, to be honest, last night didn't have the best sleep. I had about six and a half hours. Um, I had one minute, 50, one hour, 52 of deep sleep, which is actually still really good. Darren? Yeah. Um, can I jump in if that's all right for a second? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. It's Emily here from Document Logistics. Hi, um, I, I'm just trying to um, find out from other people. Are you guys finding out that you're having very vivid dreams at the moment? like very very vivid so like you know that you know you've been asleep but it's so vivid like you feel like you're actually in the dream i feel like since since the lockdown it's happened a lot more and i, I actually experience it every night i've heard it i've not had it personally but I've, I've heard it's quite a common symptom at the moment of either lockdown or covid or both and so okay. on, the, on the on the study on the aura ring study they asked that exact question so they they know that there's some link um but obviously they i suppose the, the the issue i think they've got is that everybody's locked down and some people have got covid and so they don't they can't tell out of those yet whether it's covid or whether it's the lockdown that's causing it
But once I, they start, I, I, yeah, I don't. I mean, to, to, for me myself, I, I, I know I'm not ill because I haven't been out of my house for bloody weeks. <laughs> so I know, I know I'm not ill. However, I think it's probably like a psychological thing, you know, being locked at home and uh, just would, giving I'll, you I'll, different I'll, kind of sleep. That's all. That's what it is. So I'm just, I just wanted to ask you if you, if you experienced it. That's it. I, I, now I have. I, I would argue you don't know whether you've had it yet, and I, I, I don't, well, I don't think true, any, yeah. I, don't, I don't think anybody does until they've had the antibody test. Um, but they're rolling them out. So it's, um, I think when, when they get a map of exactly who's at it and when, I've, I, I think probably 70% of people have already had it, to be honest. Okay. I think it'd be a very, very high number. I would say, Emily, um, my sleeping pattern has changed since isolation. Okay. Um, I am finding I'm having to go to bed later because I'm not so tired until later. And I just wonder whether that's the reduction in stress from the work environment you work a little bit easier at home than you do when you're on the cold face so i'm finding i'm needing less sleep and having to get to bed later okay it, yeah so sleep's really interesting from a dna perspective you've got basically three types of sleepers so i'm what's called a lark so there's something called a clock gene okay uh, my clock gene is set to lark um, which essentially means I go to bed early, I go to bed late, uh, sorry, um, get up early, go to bed early. So I, I normally get up at five o'clock uh, and I'm, I'm normally in bed for nine. I have done for a long, long, long time, apart from when I go out and then, you know, I'm back home, whatever. But usually during the week, I'm up at five, bed for nine. Uh, and interestingly on my DNA, that is my profile. Whereas you've got other people who are, uh, what's the other one, uh, Lark, um, Night Owl. So a night owl traditionally would be someone who gets up later and goes to bed later. And it might just be that you're getting more in tune with your actual DNA. It might be because of the fact, like you say, you're at home and you've not got the external stresses of work, et cetera, um, that you're more in tune with what your natural DNA is telling you to do. Mm. potentially yeah, I, don't, I don't i don't know my, my optimum sleep is six hours 20 apparently not being yeah. exact said, yeah but i'm getting away with five hours at the moment yeah i mean it, it, there's some biohackers out there in america who argue that you don't need any more than five hours the interesting thing they do say though is out of those five hours you need three hours deep sleep yeah. and a lot of the data i'm seeing is a lot of people are not even getting half an hour deep sleep so they're actually getting poor quality sleep which means when they wake up they're not really feeling refreshed yeah um and interestingly to your point emily about dreaming what they're looking at is the amount of rem sleep so rem sleep is your dream state and so they can't turn around and say you had that vivid dream at 401 in the morning but what they can say is this point you were elevated for 10 minutes and so they can so people tend to dream i tend to get them just before i wake up they're the ones i remember anyway and um i can see the profile on my aura ring and i can see like a five ten minute block of rem sleep just before i'm waking up um and so in a nutshell get good sleep now we're all different but, you know, for some people, it's five hours. For some people, it's eight and a half. If you're doing a lot of training, for example, you know, athletes, some athletes are sleeping 10, 11 hours a day. So when, when I went out to New Zealand, I went to the World Championships in uh, triathlon. And um, I, I raced for Great Britain out, out there. And I, we had some pro triathletes out there. And I, I was just asking them questions. And I said, what do you do? And um, they said, well, we get up at six in the morning. We go for, a, I don't know, one hour run. Then we have some breakfast. Then we have some sleep for half an hour. Then back out at about 10 o'clock, train for two or three hours on the bike, have some to eat, go to sleep, etc. And they, that's just their life. That's what they do. So it depends on your situation, really. Also, there's certain problems people have with sleep. So whether it's... So if you're carrying excess weight, for example prob likelihood you're going to snore the snoring will keep you awake and also reduce your deep sleep so you know get your, when you know when the gps are all open again just get yourself checked out and just see if you've got sleep apnea or you've got polyps or you've got any other thing that's blocking your sleep what i also do um basically is i open my window at night and 
on my aura ring it'll actually show me that my body temperature has dropped by 0 0.2 0 0.3 degrees and interestingly I've, I've, I've closed it tested it when it's open and when i have it open even in the depth of winter i sleep better and have more deep deep sleep so what i wouldn't recommend is having the central eating on getting your house super hot because your sleep will be degraded by having too hot in the house okay next one thanks so replace your fat with muscle right so there's actually nothing wrong with body fat what there is a problem with is carrying too much so for women you're looking at for the there's, there's three types of fat that the university of venice have defined okay which is very different to your bog standard pair of scales for 20 quid that will measure something called subcutaneous and visceral fat so that's old school new school is you've got three types of fat um and for women you're looking at somewhere between 12 and 30 percent is good most healthy women i test are i very very rarely see any women under 28 percent and anything usually to be honest anything around 28 to 34 is fine it's absolutely fine it's when you're hitting 40 45 50 that's that's problematic all right for men you're looking at um let me get the numbers it's between 12 and 25 percent so again most men are not most you don't get that many men under 25 percent anywhere in the ballpark of 25 to 28 is not bad uh, i see loads of men who are 40 45 50 percent fat um and so it's weird because weight training is really unfashionable it's associated with meatheads with people who are i don't know in a gym and they're not really that smart <laughs> And that was kind of my view for years, to be honest, because I, I, I wasn't a gym bunny at all. And then I started getting into it and I realized that, number one, you need muscle, okay? Um, and so for men, you need 40% muscle, whatever your age. Um, for women, you need above 35%. And so many women I test are way below that. So many men I test are way below that. Um, and so work more on building your muscle you know if you've never been to a gym before go and find one go and have a chat with a pt or you know a friend or whatever just buy some weights off amazon spend 20 quid well, probably well, to be honest about 120 quid at the moment because the pivot have been fleeced but um aldi have got so i know for fact aldi have got something like 15 quid right nobody's got any excuse just go in aldi spend 15 quid and just watch a few youtube videos and start doing some weights all right and what you'll do you'll increase your muscle mass and your fat mass will drop naturally okay what i would say for health is avoid excessive cardio all right so a lot of people fall into this trap where they start running marathons it's really not a good idea um i i do do long distance running all right but what i do know is that it's highly inflammatory so i do it for a bit and then so for example i've, I've not I did, I did milton Keynes 20 miler uh, on march the 11th i've not ran since then um at all so I'll, I'll do a block of about three or four months build it up build it up and then i'll totally stop and i'll have probably three months off of running but i'll still keep doing the weight training because what they've found is it's highly inflammatory and what that means is uh it puts your body under under ne unnecessary pressure and stress and so that makes you more susceptible to having low immune system, feeling lethargic, tired, etc. Um, so I'm not trying to put anybody off running because in the right way, it's good. If you do either quite slow jog, walk, that's fine. And equally, if you do high intensity sprints, um, age dependent, you know, I wouldn't recommend doing sprinting at a certain age, but I would say for a lot of the population, uh, with the right supervision, you can do sprints and you can equally do low, um, slow, long distance running. Uh, sorry, slow, um, you know, walking, jogging, that kind of thing. Any questions around that? Um, no. Is skipping all right, Darren? Sorry? Skipping. Would that be okay? I can't see it. Who's that? Uh, Gary. Gary, Gary. Skip, um, it, you know what? Fair play if you can do it. I'm useless at skipping, but um, yeah, it's really good for you. 
It's um, yeah, yeah. It's um, yeah. Go for it. Okay. Food. So when you're eating, there's a big thing about mindfulness at the moment, and what it actually means is. So let, let's say you're driving. You've driven from A to B. It took you 20 minutes, but you haven't got a clue. You don't remember any of it, right? Well, that's autopilot. That's mindless driving, right? We all do it. It kind of doesn't matter. Um, but the point is with eating, it does matter, right? So a lot of people do what's called mindless eating. So they'll cook their food or they'll put it in the microwave, etc., And then they'll start eating, but they've got the phone now, they've got the telly, they've got the paper. 10 minutes, seven minutes later, it's gone. They don't remember eating it. And then they think, oh, I'm still hungry. I'm going to have a pudding or I'm going to have a whatever, bag of crisps or that's called mindless eating. And so mindful eating is this, where you actually put your phone away, turn the telly off, put the paper away and just try and focus on your food. Try and chew slower, try and just smell it, taste it, immerse yourself in it, right? Now, I'm not suggesting you do it with every meal because it'd be a bit weird. But the point is, just try and get used to that mindful eating. And what you'll find, and I, I want everybody, to, well, it's up to you, you can try it if you want. But get your phone, right? Get a 20-minute time on your phone. The next meal you have, I just want you to press time on your phone. And then um, just eat your meal. And then when you're finished, stop the timer. And just let me, well, just have a look what the number is, right? Most people eat their meals somewhere between five and eight minutes. And so what happens is you've got a hormone in your, in your belly that hasn't got time. It takes about 15 minutes for it hit, from, from, to go to your belly, to your brain, right? So if you've eaten your meal in eight minutes, your, the hormone from your belly is going, no, no, he's still hungry. So go and get a pudding, right? And so all I'm saying is slow your food down. Um, allow... The hormones go from your belly to your brain. And then at that point, at 15 minutes roughly, you'll be thinking, I'm full now and I don't need to eat anymore. And the thing is, the more you do that over time, it becomes normal. And so one of the best ways of losing fat, feeling full, um, and also digesting your food properly is just to slow down. Just go old school. Okay stress so stop trying to be perfect um we've all got these webinars we're going on where people are telling us what we should and shouldn't be doing um the point being is just try your best um strive to be one percent better each week but the key is to be consistent so if you've got any of the tips off this you know perhaps introduce five second cold shower twice a week Perhaps try and introduce doing one meal a day where you're doing it mindfully. You know, um, perhaps try and cook all of your, I don't know, five meals, five days a week. Just cook all of your food from scratch and just have takeaways and, you know, uh, ready meals two days a week. But putting yourself under unnecessary pressure is a major cause of stress. And actually, it's counterproductive because what you're going to do is... Uh, a lot of your hard work is going to be undone. So just be kind to yourself. Uh, I'm into mindfulness, meditation, what have you. And if you do five, ten minutes a day, it can help you chill out, just make you feel good. So point of this presentation, if you follow these tips, you could potentially save on average one to six weeks a year, increasing your productivity. Um, so what new software could promise that? You know, it's it's really easy little tips that if you combine it, you will get better health, you'll make more money and you'll have more time to enjoy it. And that's everything, guys. Is there any questions, anybody, anything you want to go through? I'm uh, quite interested in the, sorry, doesn't sound, I was quite interested in the Aura Ring. That thing. Yeah. So is that, so is that the ring plus an app? Um, does, what, else, what else do you get with it? Yeah, so, um, yeah, it's a ring and an app. And so it works via Bluetooth. And what it yeah. does, uh, it will send signals to the, the app in the corner and you press update and it will tell you exactly what happened the night before. 
And so it takes two weeks to get your baseline numbers. And then, so if I look at mine now, let's have a look. I'll show you the screen. So does it just monitor sleep patterns or does it pick up on anything else? Because you're saying... Uh, so, so sleep is one part of it. The main bit is heart rate variability. So yeah. heart rate variability is massive. And once you get your head around it, it can help in so many ways. Um, and it can... You can test your own food with this thing. You know, you can actually see... in. Re so for example, let's say I had some crap food, right? You can test your heart rate variability at a certain point. Let's say it's 80. Eat some crap food or have a few pints. An hour or two later, you'll see it drop like a stone. And so you can test what foods are good or bad for you or how alcohol affects you, all these kind of things. Yeah, because I've always known about heart rate variability, but there's never been an easy way to measure it. No, there hasn't. Uh, well, yeah. they, so there's another gadget which came out. I can't, can't see it. Uh, I've got another gadget. It's been around. It's called Elite HRV. Um, that's been around for three, four years that I've had. But essentially what it means is you put your finger in this thing, test it every morning where they've found that this yeah. is the best wearable for it. Yeah. Okay, cool. I have to say, Darren, I mean, my wife's type 1 diabetic. Yeah. So she, she wears the Libra. Yeah. Um, and... Since wearing that, her sugar levels have been a hundred percent under control. Yeah, so, I mean, if you're a diabetic, you get them free now on prescription. But she was one of the beta testers when they yeah. first came out. Per, uh, per, sorry, sorry, go on. No, I'm saying it's excellent for the kit. Yeah, personally, I, I would, I would have them free on the NHS for everybody. I think everybody should be tested with them uh, if they want them, um, because I think at the moment you've got. No, it's a strange situation at the moment, but, you know, going back a few months, what the reality, what was happening was you would like lots of people going to the doctor with what they class as lifestyle illnesses and this thing will pick it up. It'll actually tell people what they're putting in the mouth is causing direct damage to their body. Yeah, I mean, what um, it does is the difference she has is where you had the old litmus paper and the little testing machines just tell you what your sugar level is. This says whether your sugar level is stable, whether it's going down or up. So it actually registers that. So you can anticipate your sugar level. Yeah. Well, it really is good. I mean, a lot of people don't understand about jacket potatoes. So, so for example, let's say, let's take Slimming World, for example, yeah? I used to do Slimming World a long time ago, and I'm not, I'm not slagging it off, but the reality is for some people, if you do Slimming World and you're inflamed, this thing will make you miles worse. And so classic Slimming World food is pasta, jacket spuds, um, rice. Now, for some people, that'll work. If you've got a problem with your blood sugar and you do Slimming World, you're going to cause absolute chaos. And, the, and this is the problem is, that, you know, I'm, I'm not here slagging it off. I'm not saying anything, but the point is people need to understand how their body works. And by spending 70 quid on Amazon, you can tell what your blood sugar is doing for all your food. So for me, when I have a jacket spored, my blood sugar goes to 11, which is mm. crazy. And so essentially what that's doing is all storing to fat. It will stay there for about two and a half hours. So it will spike and it will stay there. So all of that's doing is staying, is converting straight to fat. Um, but more importantly, what it's doing is causing neuropathy. So what that means is it's attacking your nerves so you, you'll have a lot of people, when people go type 2, they, they tend to complain of headaches and uh, aching and stuff like that. And what's actually happening is the sugar is attacking their nerves. And so eventually what happens is, you know, you get limbs amputated and all that kind of stuff. But essentially, it's, 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 it's destroying all of your nerve endings. Yeah. So, it's, um, so yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with all the testing. Um, and like I say, I'm not claiming I'm 100% healthy because so I'm not. But... I just like telling people about what they can do so they can empower themselves to make better life decisions. Um, Cause we've all got different DNA. We've all got various things in our gut and all the rest of it. And you know, would you take your car to a back street, back street garage with no report and just expect them to sign a service report or MOT? You know, probably you wouldn't want that. You would want a detailed report to say, this is what kind of things you can do to help it. Um, and there you go. Okay, any more questions for Darren while he's here live? Um, 
Yes, for me, Darren, uh, it's Emily again. Yep. Are you going to be doing other sessions like this? Uh, I, I don't know, to be honest. I, I could do. Um, I'd have to have a chat with Paul, really. I, I, to be honest, I just saw it the other week and I thought I'd put my name down. So, uh, if, yeah, if, if, what, if, what we've been doing, Emily, we've just been doing a series of different webinars covering <coughs> finance, sales, marketing and, uh, and personal stuff as well. So there's no set schedule to, well, there is a set schedule, I'm lying. We have, we have a few uh, lined up, um, but uh, yeah, I, I guess Darren, I there's a, there's a market to run your own, I guess, if that was the, if you're looking for health related ones. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, if, if, if people want me to do it, I'll do it. <laughs> are, you, are you happy for me to, I, I took a couple of screenshots of what we were talking about during your presentation. Yeah, yeah. Are you happy for me to put this on LinkedIn and say that I've just attended this? I thought it was very useful. And yeah, yeah. The business communities during these uh, these webinars, and you know, this was this guy talking about this. I mean, are you happy for me to do that? It's just that I work in data protection, so I just want to make sure I've got your consent before I put you on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, Sam. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm yeah, yeah. It's fine. <laughs> and everyone's heard it now, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't go on LinkedIn that often, but yeah, yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, all on Facebook live. it's all on Facebook Live anyway. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's all been said now. So. Well, it, it, would have been, it would have been if Facebook Live didn't crash twice, but hey. Well, <laughs> well, I'm sharing a link for you, Emily. That's that's where the future schedule and the historic recordings are. So that's that's where we're putting stuff at the moment for people that have done these before, what ones are coming up. So yeah, happy for you to uh, spread the word. That'd be perfect. Okay. Yeah, yeah thank and, you. Uh, if you want to take this offline call as well, I think I've got a... Um, uh, a topic of conversation maybe we could uh, discuss after this so yes. you know i'll send you an email if that's all right with you that's perfect it's please yeah, yeah. perfect <coughs> okay anything more for darren no darren where about your base sorry where about your base milton keynes yeah wolverton mill um yeah north yeah. milton keynes yeah what about, okay. what about yourself I'm, yeah i mean i'm in northampton but i might give you a shout actually yeah yeah sam yeah yeah just give me yeah. a shout yeah cool Right, is that it? Because I'm just off for a kebab and a pint. <laughs> <laughs>